Hello and welcome to this tutorial and overview of the work brand Dresswear clothing. What's new about this set of clothes here is that we're now supporting three different body types for the male tall metahuman. So this is the male tall underweight on the left, normal weight in the center, and overweight as metahumans uh, call it. And I have renamed them slim, regular, and large. Uh, anyway, this outfit is available for these three body types, which should cover a, a wider range uh, of needs for when people need to dress their metahumans. And in this video, we're going to go over how to set this up. We're going to go over how to set up the blueprint with 5.1 in metahumans. There's a little bit of a scripting issue that I'll show you how to solve. And then we're going to go over how to either work with the built-in or uh, available materials or how to customize them. So that in the end, we're gonna get something looking like this. So here we are in the MetaHuman Creator app or in version 1.3, uh, just for reference. And for the dress wear clothing, we're going to be able to use the body type tall. And we can use, in this case, either normal weight here, overweight, which will take a second to load in, or our underweight skeleton here. So the dresswear clothing has been designed and fit and rigged to each one of these. Another nuance of this is that if you want the best uh, collisions for animations, what's going to make sense is to generate the metahuman body with this sweater. And then with any pair of pants, these slacks work really well. And lastly, you want to pick a pair of shoes that you might want to use instead of the Chelsea boots. I would say that these Ox Oxfords have a really good chance of working with our outfit as well. So here we are in Unreal Engine 5.1, and this is generally what you're going to get uh, as the layout map for this project, except you won't have the MetaHuman setup. That's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. Uh, you'll see in this front row, we have our male tall underweight. These are the underweight skins all set up on our meta mannequins here. Next, male tall normal, male tall overweight. So um, if it's not obvious, we have the same outfit essentially for the three different types of metahumans and their matching outfits as well. So the ones that are on the mannequins by default aren't going to have chaos cloth. However, we do have chaos cloth versions of all of these that I can show you right here. For a quick demo, the easiest way to check this out is to just hit simulate. Oh, the shader's uh, compiling a bit there. But if you grab the uh, mannequin like this, turn off snapping, uh, you can see that the cloth is going to move back and forth. It's a little laggy right now because we're in simulate. And when you have something uh, hovered or selected, it's kind of laggy. But when you're just regular playing the game or in sequencer, of course, it's uh, it performs quite well. So we're going to be looking at how to set up a proper metahuman blueprint uh, so that we can use our clothes. If you've used any of my other assets, you've probably seen this process, but I'm going to repeat it every time. And in specifically with 5.1, there's actually some new issues that we want to look at now. I'm sure in the future this will be less relevant as they update the metahuman blueprint. But right now there are issues and I'll show you how I deal with them at the moment. So we're in our MetaHumans folder here. I have downloaded a couple different uh, eTors, essentially, of different body types. And I've downloaded a new MetaHuman based on Kellen, I think is the preset's name. And we're going to open up this blueprint and get it set up for uh, the dress wear. So at least with my uh, Unreal Engine 5.1 and version of MetaHumans, as soon as you open the MetaHuman, we're going to get these errors. So let's look at how I'm fixing that. Um, for this project. So if you click on the error, it's going to say that skeletal mesh uh, is deprecated. So this doesn't work anymore. And so one way to fix this is to do get skeletal mesh asset and connect this and you can delete this one. And if we compile, we'll see that that error is gone here. One caveat though, for game developers is that this is editor only. So if you package this game um, as is now, this probably doesn't work. I think there's another way to handle this, probably by um, casting. But for now, if we're considering that this is going to be used for sequencer, 
uh, this should work just fine. So we'll go to the other error here. It's the same thing. Um, I'm pretty positive that they're just going to fix this in the next MetaHuman update, but for now, get Skeletal Mesh Asset. This should work okay for our sequencer users of MetaHumans. And if you're just prototyping your game still and not packaging and shipping, this probably still works. Um, however, we'll have to come up with a new solution or I'm sure they'll give us one in the future. So that's our first housekeeping chore here. So I'm going to just force this here, forced LOD to zero. This is gonna keep high quality the whole time. That is how I recommend using MetaHumans for sequencer anyway. And if your game's like, you know, super high end PC targeted, you can pull that off as well. So to start, uh, I'm gonna go to each one of these slots, so to speak here, and we're gonna clear them. And we're gonna clear like this. So this gets rid of the torso. You'll see that the arms and chest have been deleted. That's on purpose. Uh, and we want it that way. If we get rid of the pants, again, there's no pants, there's no body in there. This is good in this case. And for us, we're gonna use our shoes and we're gonna clear those off. So. Once you clear out all the clothing slots, so to speak, this is what the actual metahuman body is. There's no chest, arms, legs, um, and there's not toes. So that's gonna work out pretty well uh, for rigging for us. So we're gonna compile save. And what we wanna do is add one more torso slot. So we right click, duplicate, we're gonna get torso one. And then we're gonna go to the construction script where we kind of fixed the skeletal mesh asset here. And we're going to control, left click, drag this in, copy paste this. And we have essentially just added one more slot to our blueprint because we're going to need it for the jacket. So uh, next we're going to populate this. I'm just going to put this here so I can go to content browser. And we're gonna go into the work brand dress where we're gonna go to skeletal meshes. And because he is male tall normal, we're gonna go to male tall normal and we see that we have some assets here. So we have two jackets. One of them has chaos cloth applied, the other does not. So choose which one you want. We're gonna choose the chaos cloth version. I'm gonna go to torso one, click it. And I think the materials need a second to catch up, but we're Almost dressed here, almost have our whole body back. Uh, next, we'll go to the pants here. These are pretty generic pants. They're not um, amazing or special in any way. There is some interesting bugs with 5.1 with this, but we'll reset. Even though it showed it, it was not. Um, there's a lot of those issues. I mostly work in 5 right now, but, you know, got to make sure that it works in 5.1 here. Uh, so those are the pants. You could probably use the many human pants. I haven't tested uh, this outfit just yet and then we're going to choose between these two sweaters so this one is a full sweater it has arms it has um, a full chest and back but um, that's good if you're going to only use the sweater however we're going to use this one that doesn't have arms it's the same idea of deleting the parts that aren't seen of the metahuman body similar idea so we're going to put this one in the torso slot again 5.1 is kind of bugged or something. I don't know what's going on. We're going to reset. And there is our sweater, jacket, and pants. And lastly, and new for me um, with this set is that I'm actually uh, producing shoes as well. So we're going to use the MTN, male tall normal shoes here. And those are going to go under feet like this. And we're going to reset. I don't know what's up with 5.1. And there we are with a fully dressed metahuman with everything synced together. So we added a slot here. We're making sure that we are going to enable master pose on it, basically having it follow the body. And this is our fix for now. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have a different way of doing this in the future. But if you're trying to use this set of clothing right now, generating a new metahuman in 5.1, this is the fix. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have another way of handling that. Otherwise, we're all set with our metahuman blueprint. So we are back in the layout map and let's go get our newly created metahuman here. We're going to drag him out into the scene here and he is dressed and looking pretty good. 
So next, let's talk about getting some different materials for this character. So this is a male tall normal, and that means that he belongs with this row of characters over here. Again, if you're working with male tall under, front row, male tall over, back row. So these are some pre-configured materials that I've created here. Uh, we've got the kind of standard black uh, wool jacket into a linen suit, houndstooth, plaid, plaid for both, and some different variations. This is kind of like the hero outfit that I used for reference. And here's the sweater on its own. So say you like one of these outfits, one way to do this, uh, you can do this in the blueprint or you can do it in the uh, instance of the blueprint here. Say we like this outfit. They actually use the same sweater, so that's pretty easy. But say we like this jacket. One way to do this would be to click the folder here under the material. It's going to select it. Actually, let's see if this works in 5.1. And then we have to go find that same slot on this character, which it's a little bit of work. That's going to be our torso one. And we're going to click this arrow and apply it. So it's not the fastest thing in the world, but we're going to do this again for the second slot. It's actually a little confusing. Uh, we're going to click on the torso again, and it's the second slot. We're going to click this arrow. So now we're using um, his uh, materials. That's like probably the easiest way to switch that over. On top of that, if you want to make your own variation, because most of these are color customizable, the black, the gray, the red, that's all chosen in the material. So we could make colored versions of this or colored alternatives really easily. So on this jacket again, um, we're going to click on torso one, which in our case is the jacket. And we'll see that there's two materials. There's going to be jacket A and jacket B. So we're going to click on this and you're going to find this folder here that is materials, male tall normal. And these are all the material options that I've made for us already. And we can make new ones and customize it. And I'm going to show that right now. I don't like this pop out version of it. So I'm going to go just to a regular content browser. Again, this stuff is in our materials and then there's materials per body type. And it's worth mentioning that the male tall normal and male tall underweight use the same materials. Uh, that was the goal. Male tall overweight is a big enough change where it's its own mesh completely and its own material set. So for male tall under, male tall normal, we're going to be using these materials. So it's a lot of materials. It's kind of overwhelming at first. But if we look at the names carefully, we have jacket A and a bunch of variations. And then we have jacket B and a bunch of variations. So let's say we want to make an alternate of the houndstooth here we're going to just go to i would say like the last one it really could be any of them we're going to control d that's going to make uh a jacket ac7 that's just uh, the naming convention that the market marketplace goes with and then we're going to need jacket b duplicate that again now we have a c7 so we have our two materials here like this and we'll go customize them but we want to first apply them either in the blueprint that would work or we can do it out here and I'm going to do it out here. So on our torso one, we can just now click and go find C7. We just made that scroll down. This is why the naming order is uh, convenient to do it that way. It's easy to find the variations. So we can deselect the metahuman here so he's not glowing. And now if we change these materials, which I'll just bring them out here. Here's our metahumans that we were importing. If we change those materials here now, we'll be able to customize this outfit. And most of the materials work this way. Some of them don't. But the shoes, the pants, the sweater, all of the things can pretty much be customized this way with the colors. So we'll start with the first one here. And the only active color slot looks like is the first one here. And we could change this to whatever we want. So I'm going to go with green for no particular reason here. Uh, we'll go green. And I'm going to copy the hex linear. You can copy any of these values. Or actually, what you can do, um, I didn't commit that colorway. Put this back like this. Pick the color you like. And I believe you could just right click this and say copy. That's good. Now we're in jacket B. And we're going to paste. So that color got pasted in. And now we have a green houndstooth outfit. Pretty cool. 
And this last slot here, there's no way of labeling it than I know of yet. You just kind of have to play around. If you see a color param, you're like, what's this do? You're going to have to go find out uh, by doing stuff like this. Uh, this is clearly the button. Uh, the button can be changed here so we can make it black or maybe come up with something slightly more interesting. It's up to you. You can make this outfit so many different um, variations just by changing these material colors here. And that is definitely the power that I rely on in Unreal Engine because I like choosing my colors here and not in Substance Painter where I make the materials. So when it comes to Chaos Cloth with this outfit, only the jacket has it. And again, if you hit Simulate and we grab our MetaHuman and we move them around, you can see that it's just going to work by default. It's laggy because we're mousing over. Uh, the Chaos Cloth just works out of the gate. That is what happens when you left click and drag and miss. Uh, we're going to get our Chaos Cloth working here when you hit play. So if this is a video game, you don't have to do anything. It's just going to play. In Sequencer, it's the same thing. It will just work out of the gate if you're using the Chaos Cloth version. However, when you're hitting play in the sequence in the editor, most likely it's not going to play and do the Chaos Cloth unless you, unless you go and toggle some settings off and on. It's kind of annoying. Um, just know that when you do your render, it's going to just start simulating on its own. But you may not see it in the preview, but on its own, Chaos Cloth just works really great with Sequencer. You just can't use any temporal sampling because it's going to simulate every single one of those like helper frames. So you can only get away with a uh, single temporal frame aliasing, so not super high quality. But I think for a lot of cases, rendering faster is good. And the extra secondary free animation you're going to get from this looks pretty awesome. Cool, so that wraps it up for this tutorial on how to use the work brand. Dress wear outfits, again, pretty similar to the other outfits as well, but I do want to make a video like this every single time. I make a new set, um, a new asset pack for the marketplace because sometimes I update the materials or again, something changes with MetaHumans and Unreal Engine 5 like it is now. There's always things changing and just wanted to have like really explicit overview videos so that it's easy to set them up the first time. If you do end up purchasing the pack, first of all, thank you very much and would love to see the end result that helps me kind of figure out what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong. Um, also requests for clothing. I do very much consider that when I'm making my next ones and feel free to tag cinematography DB on Instagram. And that is a great place to share work. And I usually would reshare it as well as a story. If you're using the skins, I like seeing the work out there. That's the best place to share it with me. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the next video.